decided to play this game called Mort uh, Mortician's Tale, which is uh, available on Itch.io and Steam. And on Itch.io it says, A Mortician's Tale is a story-driven, death-positive video game where you play as a mortician tasked with running a funeral home. Take on the role, role of recent funeral direction graduate Charlie as she learns the ropes of the business and industry. Prepare the bodies of the deceased, embalming or cremation, attend their funerals, and listen to their loved ones' stories and interact with Charlie's coworkers, clients, and bosses. A mortician's tale is an informative, honest, and sometimes humorous look at the current state of and the future of the Western death industry. So yeah. I decided to wear black today, sort of like I'm ready for a funeral. This is my Wednesday Adams dress, so I'm glad I had another reason to wear it. So let's get started. This, I think this is going to be like chill sort of game, nothing like really creepy, but uh, it looks very interesting. So let's start. December 14th, 10.15 a.m. Oh, we got an email. Oh, from Matthew Jeffrey to Charlie. Welcome, Charlie. Nice to meet you. My name's Matthew, and I'm mainly going to be the man who delivers the bodies to you and helps with some of the more heavy lifting. Ever hear that joke about a hearse driver? I'll tell it to you when I come by in a bit. Looking forward to working together. I think you'll enjoy working here. Amy is a sweetheart, but she runs a tight ship. Nothing you can't handle, I'm sure. She wouldn't have hired you otherwise. Cheers and good luck. He is the funeral director. Hello and welcome to our new funeral director. Hello, everyone. Oh, okay. From Amy Rose. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce our new funeral director, Charlotte, or Charlie, as she told me, as she, as she told me she likes to be referred to. Charlie is a recent graduate who came highly recommended and is eager to begin her career here with us at Rose and Daughters Funeral Home. Please take the time to make Charlie feel at home within our little family. We'll have a nice catered lunch this afternoon so we can all get to know each other a little better as well. Okay. Uh, from Amy. Hello, Charlie. Well, you're new here, so it's probably best I explain where everything is. In your office slash preparation room, you'll find your cremation station, cre cremulator station, embalming station, and obviously, since you're reading this email, your desk and computer area. I know you have experience working with these stations, but please let me know if you have any questions. Jen Love. Uh, huh. I guess my subject line is to you should start being more professional now, now that we are business professionals. I can't wait to get your reply so I can see your fancy new email signature. I love that you were able to land this gig straight after graduating. It sounds super cool. I didn't even know mom and pop funeral homes were a thing until now. Guess it's not something I really think that much about. I should look more into this, learn more about your world and industry, because as I said, you are now a very serious professional. Speaking of being a professional, my museum gig is amazing. I can't believe somebody paid me to move to London and not London, uh, serial killer capital of Canada, <laughs> mm, to work in a museum. Like, take that everyone who said I couldn't get a job with an art history degree. I'll tell you more about it when we Skype. My stories require you to see my face and that you hear my excellent British accent impersonation. Also, I signed you up for a funeral's monthly newsletter. Consider it, to, consider it your graduation gift. Love you. I'm super proud of you gift. And I'm super proud of you gift. Love you, love you, love you. Okay. Reply. Oh. Uh, Amy Rose. <coughs> uh, hello, Charlie. Hope you settled in okay so far. Matthew should have dropped off your first body for you to work on. He said you really, you are really friendly and he's glad to have someone young and lively to work with. You'll get used to his sense of humor. Your first body is Miss Garcia, an elderly woman who died suddenly of a heart attack. 
the family has asked for a closed casket funeral, so no embalming or body preparations is necessary. Closed casket funeral, no embalming, okay. The family seems a little bit more united than previous families we've dealt with. Strange how grief affects people differently. Perhaps having more time to say goodbye makes things a bit easier, if that's possible. That being said, although you will not be embalming Miss Garcia, I do think it's important to take the time to clean her body. No one is going to see her body. But I like to encourage my funeral, funeral directors to do this out of respect for the deceased and their loved ones. You'll find Miss Garcia in the prep room. Talk soon. Okay. Oops, I, I wanted to read the other ones. Then I answered that one. Oh, this is the funeral's monthly Jen sent to us. Thanks for subscribing. Each month we will bring you a, news, a new newsletter featuring a topic pertaining to the death industry. This month is all about good etiquette for attending a funeral. I really can't believe we have to write this one out, but since we said we'll answer your most popular questions, here we are, because this is definitely one of the most popular questions. Funerals are a hard time and we understand that, but here are some quick and easy rules to remember for being respectful at a funeral. Generally, following the guidelines of don't be a jerk should work. Number one, don't be on your cell phone. We understand you're busy, but this is a time and place to disengage. If you have to be on your cell phone, do, don't do so inside the funeral home. Don't be loud and obnoxious. Number two. You can share happy stories, but other people are also grieving and working through their own healing process. Be quiet. Being quiet gives other people space they might need. Number three, don't get drunk. Everyone can deal with their feelings in their own ways. Just remember to be respectful when the grieving family, with the grieving family and friends. Number four, happily reminisce. Sometimes remembering happy moments and positive experiences with the deceased can be a productive part of the healing process. Number five, give condolences. It's not easy knowing what to say to someone, but even a simple I'm thinking of you can go a long way. Number six, dress appropriately. What this looks like will change based on the customs of, de of the deceased and their culture, but always dress in a way that shows respect to the deceased and their grieving family. Number eight, give a gift or sign the registration book. This can be flowers or a nice card, but it's the thought that counts here. Sometimes this can even just can e can be even just cooking dinner for the grieving family. Anything that shows you care and want to help them through the healing process is what matters here. Be kind and be helpful. Okay, so our first our first deceased is Miss Garcia. She it's a closed cast, it's no embalming, no body preparations. Okay. Oh wait, there was something else. I'm sorry. What is this tab? Rose and Daughter's Funeral Home. Here at Rose and Daughter's Funeral Home, we are committed to providing loved ones with the best and most affordable funeral services in the area. We offer a diverse range of personalized funeral services service options to fit every need and these are the prices Ooh. we also offer custom packages to suit every budget and need please do not hesitate to contact us with any questions um, here's the founder Amelia Rose Rose and Daughters Funeral Home was founded by my grandparents back in 1956. The Rose family has proudly served the area since then, providing personal, affordable, and funeral services for all. I am proud to have carried on my family's business for the last 36 years, working with the best and brightest funeral directors and grief counselors in the area. Please don't hesitate to reach out if you've recently experienced a loss and would like us to help you through this hard time. Okay, sorry if that was a lot of reading. Let's start. Okay, this is Miss Garcia, and this is Charlie, our cute little mortician. She has tats on. She has tats. She's so cool. Okay, let's see. This is the prep room where you will prepare bodies for funerals and viewing. Because the family has requested a closed cassock ceremony with no embalming, you are just going to clean the body. Click on the sponge and drag it over the body to clean. Which one is the sponge? Cotton balls. 
sponge. Okay. We're doing a good job. That's it. You're done. Miss Garcia will be sent to Mike, who will take care of dressing and put her in the casket. It's time to go to Miss Garcia's funeral. You are responsible for taking care of the deceased body, but it is also important to pay your respects to their loved ones. Follow the arrow to head to the funeral parlor. Seems pretty simple. Oh, she, look at her. Her dress looks like mine. That was not planned. Oh my gosh. Me and Charlie match. Okay, let's talk to these people. She would have hated these paintings. She was so peculiar. Uh huh. Yeah, at least she doesn't have to see them, I guess. That's. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 oh. Can I sign the book? Nope. Okay, let's talk to these people. Yeah, I heard the family specifically said no embalming. I thought it was mandatory, like required by law, but I guess not. Embalming weirds me out. Do those chemicals leach into the ground? It seems strange to be using a chemical that is known to cause cancer and putting it into the ground like that. Or into the sewer. That's what they must do with the leftover for formaldehyde. Right? Just pour it down the drain? At least embalming guarantees you won't be buried alive. Heh <laughs> stop it. Don't make me laugh right now. What a weird conversation to have. Oh, little Timmy. Let's go talk to him. Mommy, I'm hungry. Where can we go? That's it? Okay. Why are you hungry at a funeral home? I hate wearing pantyhose. My legs are so itchy, but it's always so cold in these funeral homes. I think I might actually miss those sweaters she used to knit for me now. Oh, Miss Garcia used to knit sweaters? We don't usually small talk a lot at these things. At least that's what I was always taught. Okay. I guess this means we're done. We gotta like, click on the body. Paying our respects. Okay. Is that it? I guess so. On to the next one. October 11th, 10.09 a.m. So this is a very, like, chill, calming sort of game. But it has, like, it's kind of interesting to me because morticians they're like deal with the deceased and it's kind of kind of I don't know kind of dark but not really this is sort of like painting in a more positive light like you know this is someone's actual job which is kind of cool Jennifer Valentine Okay, so let me explain this in a bit more detail. A colleague and I were discussing the tight lacer's liver specimen specimen we have here at the museum. It's from a woman who died in 1907, and the liver is tapered, tapered, tapered inwards from what the doctor leading the autopsy believed was too tight lacing on her corset. It's fascinating because it's kind of a controversial topic. Tight lacing was super popular and while people associated it with fainting or hysteria, it's actually been associated with visceroptosis. Visceroptosis. I probably butchered that. Which is when the organs fall to the lower part of the abdomen right? Which is super unsettling, but can also be caused by being pregnant. So, of course, it's probably messed up some bones, but likely didn't do this kind of internal organ damage. And I'm tired of the condescension about my wardrobe and what implies, and that also implies I don't know what I'm doing. Okay. These are the kinds of things I specifically research and get am treated like I know nothing about. I'm having a day, Charlie. Oh, girl. Me too. This this boy was hungry at the funeral and it concerned me. Unnatural, I tell you. 
Can I rant for a second? I'm so tired of hearing strangers, colleagues, anybody, <coughs> male colleague, cough, get on my case for wearing corsets. Oh, I read these in the wrong order. Oh, well. I wear them under my blazer and over a nice blouse, but it's not like I'm dressing inappropriately, even though dress codes are such sexist BS anyways. And like, I hate how their miso misogyny gets veiled in fake concern. Jen, I'm worried you're damaging your body. You know what corsets do to the livers, right? Corsets don't do anything to livers. They're definitely not hurting me as much as their your condescension is hurting my head. Ugh, sorry, I'm out of sorts now. I'll send you another email in a little bit when I've cooled off a bit. Thank you, Jennifer. Ooh, next body. Here are the instructions for the next body. You did a remarkable job on the first one. The family was very happy with you. No small feat, of course. Pleasing a grieving family isn't exactly the most comfortable of jobs. Your next job is a man named Mr. Duval. An elderly man died of old age. Nothing fancy, just a standard funeral with embalming. You can reach out to his daughter, Lizzie Duval, if you have any questions. She's handling her father's passing as well as can be expected. As always, don't hesitate to ask me any questions. P.S. Please, uh, Charlie dear, please remember to wear proper embalming gear. Formaldehyde is extremely dangerous. I know I don't need to tell you, but my maternal instincts are hard to ignore. I promise I won't mother you too much. Well, just a little. Ask Mas Matthew, he knows. That's so cute to have a boss that's like a motherly figure. Mm. That's amazing. Uh, Mia Garcia. Hi, Amy. Please pass along our deepest thanks to you and your staff for the wonderful job you did with our mother's funeral. It was really lovely. Our family was family so rarely gets together. It was nice seeing everyone come out for such a beautiful service. My son never gets to see his family. Also, it was incredibly kind of you to let us bring our own food in. Getting to share home-cooked meals, sharing stories, being there together, it was... It, it meant a lot. So... What I'm saying is, it was nice for everyone to be there like that, together in that way, and I know how much of that was due to the work of your staff, especially your funeral director. Thank you for making this difficult time easier for all of us. Best, Mia. Thank you, Amy. Matthew. Hey there, Charlie. I was driving around the other day, you know, taking our clients on their last trip around town, and I was thinking, strange. I know. Did I ever tell you the first time I went to a funeral? I was a teenager about to start university, and a friend of mine was killed in a car accident. Totally out of the blue. Really tragic stuff. Messed me and my friends up real good. But so the big day, we got all into our we all got into our best suits and dresses and packed ourselves into a few cars. There were a lot of us, so we had to we had at least three different cars full of us. Like clown cars, you know? While we were in the procession going into the cemetery, somebody in our car got a phone call from a friend in a different car. Turns out some butt-hat driver who doesn't know how, no, doesn't know to not get in the way of a procession drove through the intersection and smashed straight into our friend's car. Nobody was hurt, thank God, but can you imagine getting that call? Anyways, one of my best friends in the same car as me, the one who got the phone call, hung up and started laughing, just laughing her butt off in that way that makes you not sure if they're really just crying or if they've gone fully off the deep end. And she laughed, and then we all started giggling because like, go figure, life is messed up sometimes, you know? There's no moral, no point to that story, I guess. I just remembered that story and wanted to tell you, because we work with death all the time. And I still sometimes get caught off guard by what that actually means. Oh, before you get any ideas, that has nothing to do with why I came, became a funeral director. That decision came totally later and is nothing unremarkable. Somebody has to do it and I have a strong stomach. So why not? I'll see you in a bit, Charlie. Ooh, okay. Oh, here's our funeral monthly. What to wear when you're attending a funeral from a different culture. This is kind of interesting. We all know everyone wants to be respectful at funerals. Don't talk too loudly, be kind, smile, and refrain from making inappropriate jokes, at least around the grieving family. Hey, sometimes some people do need a little bit of a pick-me-up during such hard times. Who are we to judge? 
and a big part of that is knowing what to wear. Roman Catholic funerals tend to lean more to the formal black attire rule, and it works for us. Did you know this goes back to the days of the Roman Empire where people would wear black as a symbol for mourning? Black isn't universally the symbol for mourning, though. And if you're attending a funeral that is from a culture that is not your own, it is important to understand this. Some cultures have different meanings, and despite your best intentions, the wrong choice could mean an accidental offense. For example, in Hinduism and in Chinese cultures, white is a typical color for funerals. For Islam, though it is less about the color you are wearing and more about how modestly you are dressed, refrain from wearing any elaborate jewelry and be respectful of your behavior. For Sikh funerals, color of the clothing isn't as important as is dressing modestly and being able to appropriately sit cross-legged. Actually, being respectful is just the number one rule for any funeral, no matter what, really. Remember that, and please don't hesitate to ask what is and isn't appropriate to wear. If you are attending to support a friend, family member, or partner, this day is not about you, so be sure to do whatever you can to be as respectful and supportive as possible. Even if that means not wearing what you've used to wearing, you're used to wearing at a funeral, or even if it just means asking how, you can appropriately show your respects. Okay. Let's go the next one. Mr. Duval. Oh, we're in our embalming attire. Safety first. What is all this? Can I click on it? No. Okay, let's go. Nope. No, no. Okay. Mr. Duval. Traditional burials typically require embalming, which preserves the body and prevents it from decomposing as quickly. Unless the family requests otherwise, all traditional burials will use embalming. Let's start by cleaning the body. Okay. Right. The razor. And drag it. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Okay, it's like spaghetti noodles. In order to break rigor mortis, you'll have to massage the body. Click and drag over the body to massage it. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, okay. The eyeballs deflate once the body starts decomposing. Click and drag an eye cap into each eye socket to give it shape. I can't- oh, wow. That's interesting. To keep the eyes shut, you'll need to glue them. Okay. The mouth sags and hollows once the body starts decomposing. Click and drag a cotton ball into the mouth to give it shape. Ooh. To keep the mouth from opening, you'll need to suture it shut. Click and drag the needle and thread over the jaw to close it. Click and drag the lotion over the body to moisturize it. This prevents the skin from drying out. Ooh. Okay. I'm digging the color scheme of this game. Embalming involves removing blood and replacing it with preserving chemicals. Click and drag the scalpel over the neck to make an, an incision. That was loud. You're going to need a tube for draining the blood. Click on the tube and drag it into the neck incision. There's a tube. Click on the canule. Can canula to the cutter artery. This is how you'll get the preserving chemicals into the bloodstream. This? No. This? Yes. Now you'll need to connect the embalming machine to this. Wait. Grab some additional tubing. Oh, okay. No. Drag it to... Okay. Click the button on the machine. Put it back. In order to equally distribute the chemicals, you'll have to massage them through the body. Okay. And... 
to... This is very interesting and strange at the same time. drain the organs of any remaining fluids. Click on the choke car, then click and hold on the abdomen until all the liquid has been drained. Oh. Oh. Okay, this is so strange. This is very interesting. Oh my gosh. Oh wait, I have to... until the X goes away, I guess. Okay. You're all done. Mike will take care of Miss Duval's makeup as well as dressing and putting in this casket. Time to go. Trying to get our cute little dress and go talk to some weird people. Okay. What are you guys talking about? Came out of nowhere. I mean, it's always sort of does, doesn't it? Yeah, one minute you're laughing, having fun, and then the next, poof, that person is gone. Just, like, gone. Yeah, it's weird to think about for too long, like staring at the sun. I start to feel all fuzzy when I think about it. Mmm, so weird how our bodies just stop working like that. Yeah, yeah. Mmm. So strange not seeing most people wearing white. White? Yeah, I think it's different for different family members. I can't remember. I haven't gone to many traditional funerals, so mostly white, but like definitely not red, no matter what. What does red mean? He always wanted to take his grandkids to the park. Play catch. He loved playing catch. He threw a mean curveball, that's for sure. You go, Grandpa. What, what are you doing on your Nintendo DS? Specs. You will be missed. I love you. Okay, let's go. <laughs> December 2nd, 1022 AM. Today's funeral is for a woman who died from breast cancer. Nothing fancy, just a standard cremation. Please don't hesitate to ask me if you have any questions. Okay. We have a casket this time. Uh, thank you uh, from Lizzie Duval. Thank you for the wonderful evening you and your staff put together for my father's funeral. He wasn't always an easy man to get along with, but I'm glad to have seen him off in such a kind way. She has a little doggy in her picture. It's cute. That's how you know she's good people. Okay, it's Jen. Charlie, I was doing some reading. I know you hate when I try to give you dating advice, but hear me out. There's this dating site that's specifically for people working in the death industry. Okay, so maybe I'm a little worried for you. You haven't mentioned anybody new since the breakup of since the breakup of 2014. <laughs> that we will never speak of again after this moment. But you're always saying how tired you get of people being scared to ask about your day, so maybe meeting somebody in the industry isn't the worst idea. Why don't we date Matthew? Just putting that out there. Just promise me you'll consider it, okay? It's harder for me to make sure you're seeing sunlight when I'm all the way across the ocean. I know you look like a babe with pale skin and witchy goth aesthetics are super hot right now, but vitamin D is still a good thing. Mom, rant over. I'm going to try it out because turns out people get super scared off when you tell them you work in a museum filled with dead bodies. Do you know how not interesting other people find teratomas? Charlie, I didn't know we were this weird to outside people. I've been spoiled by having a best friend who was as much of a weirdo as I am. Miss you. Let's grab a bottle of wine for our next Skype date. P.S. If you sign up for dead meat, isn't that the... 
dead meat? How disrespectful. <laughs> Isn't that the best name for a death industry dating website? No. Tinder rules apply. You have to like me if you come across my profile, whatever. I'm not sure how it works just yet, though. Okay. Oh, here's Matthew Jeffrey. I don't like the look of this. Not one bit. I know you've only been with us for a few months, but maybe you're aware of the trouble Amy has been having. A small mom and pop shot like Rose and Daughters can compete with the bigger guys. Wait a minute. I gotta read this one first. Hey Matthew, this is embarrassing, but it seems I miscalculated some of her income and I don't have enough to pay you this week. Would it be terribly inconvenient if I were to cut you a check for next week instead? If you need the mon money urgently, please let me know. I feel terrible about this whole thing and I can cut you a check from my personal account if need be. I'm so sorry about this. I assure you won't have it again. <gasps> Mama Rose is having financial issues? Oh my gosh. And Matthew says, Anyway, don't tell Amy I said this to you. Also, I'm starving, so I'm going to grab some fast food before taking the hearse through the car wash. <laughs> that, that'd be something. Two birds, one stone. And swinging back to the home. The home, is that what it's called? <laughs> Do you want anything? A beef and cheddar? I'm going to take the hearse through the drive through of course. It freaks people out. I love it. They get so awkward. Let me know. I'm heading out in 15 minutes. Man, these jobs, these people's jobs sound so cool. LGBTQ funerals respect. If you've been a longtime subscriber to our emails or follow us on social media, you've no doubt heard about the misgendering that transgender people are at times subjected to during their funerals. There have been notable situations where trans women have had their wishes overruled by their families and have had their hair cut, are buried under the wrong names, and subjected to the wrong pronouns in their obituary and announcements. We care a lot about this because we believe in treating every person with the same level of compassion, respect, and care. And this absolutely extends to the pronouns and respecting the deceased wishes as per their lived experiences. So the CDC's Funeral Director's Handbook on Death Registration and Fetal Death Reporting offers the fraught directive, enter male or female based on observation. Do not abbreviate or use other symbols. If sex cannot be determined after verification with medical records, inspection of the body, or other sources, enter unknown. Do not leave this item blank. Leaving it up to observation obviously enters into a world of issues since bodies can be so different and because of ingrained biases, people can draw incorrect assumptions based on their own inaccurate observations. California has passed what is known as the Respect After Death Act, which states that the death certificate certificate must reflect the deceased gender identity as they lived as they lived it so a step in the right direction people who are trans diverse the same deserve the same respect in death that people who are uh, cisgender receive misgendering in death takes away this respect it can also inflict hurt and trauma on spouses and friends that survived the deceased so what can we do as funeral directors Listen to the people who come into your office. In America especially, some marriages may not be recognized as legal depending on the laws around same-sex marriage, but this does not mean you're not dealing with two people who have loved each other in the same way as another couple. Listen, learn, and always be respectful. While you have to work with the next of kin, your duty is also to ensure the deceased receives the utmost respect in their burial. If a funeral is to honor the deceased, then do that. Honor them. Cool, we get to work on this station today. Before we cremate Miss Hall, okay, we'll need to prepare her body. Miss Hall's family brought clothing and jewelry to her for her to wear. It's important to remove these before the cremation process as to not damage them. Let's start removing her necklace. Drag the necklace and put it on the tray. Oh. We need to be able to identify Miss Hall's remains after she's been cremated. Click and drag the round identification tag and place it in the coffin. Just anywhere. She is ready. Okay, cool. Oh. 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 Okay. I was wondering what that tag was for. That makes sense. That makes sense. This 
is the cremulator. Is that how it's pronounced? Cremulator? Cremulator? Contrary to popular belief, cremation doesn't turn bodies into ash as much as bone fragments. Using the cremulator, cremulator will break these bone fragments down into ash-like remains. Placing the urn in the cremulator. I'm, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. Right there. Drag the bone fragments on top. Oh my gosh. I almost flung that into the afterworld. Whoa. Okay. Look and drag. Okay, let's put this back. Make sure to put her necklace into the urn. Oh, okay. We're putting it inside. And putting that in there. Put the lid on top. Amy will take the urn to the funeral parlor and present it alongside some flowers. Okay, how are days work? Let's go, Charlie. Don't you love these colors? I love it. The purple, violet, sort of white, and then they're wearing black and the gold. Okay, I'm talking too much. I like it a lot. It's very different. This is nice, in a weird way. She liked that we're all here talking. She always tried to keep the family together. The food's delicious. I know that's weird, but these crab cakes are perfect. Glad she was cremated and not in an open casket or something. Seeing her like that, I don't know if I could have. At least we all got to say goodbye. She would have liked that. I think so. Oh, was he talking to it? She fought really hard. She was proud of herself. She never gave up. Not once. That's true. I forgot how she, she reposed. She would have hated this music. She never wanted her funeral to be so to be sad. She would have wanted us smiling. She said so. Let's pay some respects to Miss Hall. That's nice. You can do that Animal Crossing. The little bowing effect or pose. And my friend has built like February 14th, 10, 14 a.m. Has built a like a cemetery on her island and so I go there and like I, I put on my funeral clothes and like bow to all the graves to pay my respects. <laughs> I know that sounds silly. Hi all. News about the future. Oh goodness. It is with a very heavy heart that I write to, uh, to let you all know that Rose and Daughters will no longer <gasps> be in business. I had no idea how to start this email and resources I googled told me that would be the best and easiest way to break the ice. Be direct, but remorseful, Google said. The truth is, I don't really know what to say. Since my father passed away, I've done my best to make Rose and Daughters warm and friendly to anyone who chose to use our services. It was my memorial to him, the original Rose, in a lot of ways. And you've all become like family, including you, Charlie, our most recent addition. But it's been getting harder to make ends meet. Rent is going up in the neighborhood, and I'm finding less and less like I have the energy for this business. There's a lot of competition from other funeral homes, larger corporations that we are than we are that can take on more business and offer more impressive services. You know the way it goes. So I've been bought or I sold. Either way, soon Hillside Heritage Enterprises Inc., a company that owns many funeral homes in the city and across the country, will re will replace Rose and Daughters starting from the beginning of next month. Same building, same name. They're keeping the name Rose and Daughters Funeral Home for tax purposes. Though honestly, I'm trying hard not to not to just see it as a move on their part to keep up the image that it's a family-run business. I don't know how I feel about that, but I also don't know if there's anything I can do at this point either. I've signed the papers. At least my father's legacy is still intact somewhat. They have a good reputation and have agreed to keep you all on. That was one of my stipulations. I would sell as long as you weren't without a job. Sorry I didn't tell you in a more personal way. I would have loved to have a company lunch, but I, I admittedly, I didn't have the heart to tell you in person. This was easier for me. Please understand. Oh, poor Amy. I love you. 
Margareta Hall. I am so eternally grateful that you were able to accommodate our request for my sister's funeral. It was beautiful service and she would have been happy with it. That's such a weird thing to say, isn't it? Thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Okay. Please see the note below about the pacemaker. They can be tricky. A pacemaker. Mariana Reyes. Or Reyes? 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 You asked if there were any special instructions we wanted to pass along just please cremate my father he has a pacemaker too the doctor told me that that would need to be removed okay let's go ahead and click on this ryan Gar garcia hi amy i know this email might be a bit odd but you said if i was ever having troubles i should reach out and you know somebody i could talk to about all of this i just i don't know what to do now i know my grandfather had lived a full good life and was very happy and that she's not in any pain now but i still i feel empty amy i've never felt this empty empty before what am i supposed to do now i thought i was stronger than this can you refer me to someone to talk to i don't want to freak out my mom right now she's dealing with enough with work and the will and trying to just be the best mom she can i just need somebody to tell me that i'll be okay thank you and i'm sorry for being inconvenienced Ryan, you are not inconvenience, you sweet, sweet boy. Um, I thought it, I would forward this to you. In situations like this, we typically connect people like Ryan with a grief counselor or other professionals who can really help him. Sometimes we get emails like this, and when people don't know where else to turn, it's difficult, and family isn't always the most reliable for some people. Usually, I would be happy to connect him, but I'm feeling a little tired today. Not my usual self, and it would be good for you to start building these kinds of relationships on your own. You're a treasure. You want me to talk to this, this stranger about his, his his deceased sadness? I don't... Is that even appropriate? I don't even know this person. I am not a counselor. Jen Love. Charlie! I've been playing a new game when things are slow at work. It's called Tales from the Crypt Sweeper. Get it? Get it? It's like a minesweeper, but way harder. Like seriously, it's really, really difficult. And I thought my minesweeper game was on point after working that overnight front desk job at that hotel for three years, but it must have gotten rusty. Anyways, instead of mines, you want to avoid graves so you don't disturb the adorable ghosts. The main character also kind of looks like you. Want to start a healthy competition? High score gets to pick the restaurant we go to when one of us is in town next. That sounds like a cute game. Keep on protecting Earth with green burials. You've lived your life mindful of the environment, doing your part to reduce pollution and generally help help out where you can so why not continue doing that even in death at least that's the thinking for a lot of people who are going to green or, or natural burials natural cemeteries are becoming more popular and are focused on a few rules mainly it's that bodies aren't allowed to be embalmed with chemicals that can damage the environment and bodies must be buried in a biodegradable shroud or casket not only is this better for the environment it's also cheaper at Union Cemetery in Ontario, Canada, a natural burial is just over a thousand dollars. So better, so better for the people, the environment. Just maybe not so good for big business. Let's not forget people. This is still a business after all. But really, why go green? Green burials help preserve natural resources, work to reduce carbon emissions, protect the health of those preparing bodies, and restore/slash preserve natural habit habitats. Embalming fluids tend to contain formaldehyde, and funeral directors report a higher incidence of leukemia. Going green and not using toxic chemicals for embalming helps protect funeral directors while at the same time lessening the impact we have on the environment after we're gone. We here at Funeral Monthly think green barrows are pretty cool. What do you think? Reply and let us know. Actually, there is a company that will bury you in this I don't know what it's called in this container or something that's biodegradable but it like when you get buried it grows a tree where your body is like you help to make that tree grow so people can like come to this tree and actually like can like touch the tree and hug it and whatever actually have something 
like alive to look at, which I think is absolutely incredible, and I would love for that for me or just everyone to do. Like that's so so beautiful to me. There's my two cents. <gasps> oh, we can play it. What? 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 Oh, there's the ghost. Right click flag. Oh, 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 oh. This is like Minesweeper. Am I good at it? No. How do I restart? What are these symbols? Cute, cute, cute. I don't, I don't know how to play Minesweeper. These look like witchy symbols. <gasps> look at the little graves. What is this? What, what is this on top of the grave? It looks like a little unicorn pony or something. <laughs> Next, this person has a pacemaker. So we gotta take that out, I guess. Mr. Ray's came directly from the hospital, so we don't have to worry about removing any valuables from him, as the family did not provide any for us. However, he has a pacemaker, and we need to remove the cre cremation. Because pacemakers are batteries, they will explode inside the hot heat of the cremation machine, and we definitely don't want that. That's interesting. I never thought of that. Okay, click and drag the scalpel over the heart to make an incision. You can see the pacemaker. Forceps and take it out. Oh, wow. Oh, it has a little heart on it. Um, okay. We gotta put that in there. Oh, wow. That was, that was really fast. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna do the same thing we did with the last one. What happens if I do that? disrespectful of me, but it's also not real. Okay. Did you ever end up cleaning the air with your father? No, we talked a few times, but no, not really. He sounded like a difficult man. He was stubborn. That's just it, stubborn. Hmm. What do you want to do after this? It's pretty nice out. Let's change and go find a patio somewhere. Sounds good. I could really use a beer right now. Hey, did I ever tell you the time we tailgated? Okay, people are getting drunk after the funeral. You like the same guy who was doing that motion in the last funeral. I always told him to quit smoking, but of course he never listened to me. So that figures. Mm. Well, at least you tried. I wonder if he ever liked me. He was nice to me, but I don't know. He never seemed like he really cared if I was there or not. Who are you? I like your hair. It's purple. I'm sorry if he was not very nice to you. Rest in peace. Or rest in pepperonis. Let's go. February 28th, 10.35 a.m. Another day, another dollar. Let's go. Another day, another deceased. Uh, Mariana Reese. Hi, Amy. I just wanted to thank you for the service the other month, and apologize if I was abrupt. I was kind of, it was kind of a shock for me, and I didn't feel comfortable with the whole process. He wasn't supposed to die yet. It hasn't been easy. Wait, what? You get options. Charlie, I was hoping you wouldn't have to confront the situation, yet, anyways, they're never easy. Um, Rose and daughters have been asked to prepare the body of a young man who took his own life. He had a will prepared and asked for cremation, but the family has demanded a traditional burial instead. Unfortunately, he didn't make any 
didn't make anyone his power of attorney or didn't have any witnesses sign his living will or his advance directive regarding these wishes, so his family is legally in the right to do whatever they want with his body. It's unfortunate, but we have to do as his family wishes. Matthew has graciously offered to take this on if you're uncomfortable with the subject. Instead, we have a second body you can prepare for a funeral or hosting later in the afternoon. Charlie... Is this suicide something you're comfortable dealing with? Let me know. I'm here if you need me. Oh, there's Manuel Scott. Good day, Miss Rose. Disregard her son's will as it concerns matters of his burial. He was clearly not thinking right and didn't know what he really wanted. Proceed with an open casket funeral. As for payment, we'll bring a check. Like, I can't cremate him? If I say no, I can't, like, I feel like it doesn't really matter what I say. It's either I get to do it, or I don't, and he's going to be buried despite what I choose. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go to the next one, and I'll think about it. Jen Love. You hate mushrooms so much, I found the perfect thing for you. I have been thinking about death. I know, shocker. Look at what you've done to me. I think I want this mushroom suit. No, it's not called that, but I can't remember the name of it, and I'm writing you on my phone, so I don't feel like Googling it right now. Anyways, the idea is that it's a biodegradable suit that the deceased wears. It's made with what people call a biomix. Example mushrooms and other microorganisms that help to decompose the bodies, neutralize toxins in the body, and provide nutrients for the soil for plants. I think this one company even offers casket liners for use in green caskets. I think this is what I want. It'll just be like Hannibal. Wait, don't tell people I said that, okay? Oh, well. Too late. But seriously, this is pretty cool. I love all the death innovation happening. We might as well do something when we're in the ground, you know? Love you. Think about it and tell me. Let me know your thoughts. I want all your thoughts. If it's not this, then maybe I'll have my ashes made into jewelry. But seriously, I'm probably going to do this. There's no harm in planning ahead, am I right? That sounds really interesting, actually. Welcome back. Now we rarely do listicles here. But for this month's newsletter, we thought a listicle would be the best way to deliver this month's advice. What not to say at a funeral. We know figuring out the right thing to say to a grieving friend can be extremely difficult, and since that's such a personal issue, it's hard to give specific advice. Some things will be more comforting to other people, but fortunately, we can deliver a little bit more solid advice on what not to say to someone who is grieving. So here is Funerals Monthly's top five things to not say at a funeral. Number one, at least they're no longer suffering. Even if this is true, nobody wants to hear this. It's probably not your place to dictate who wants to be told that the death of somebody they love is for the best. Like I said, even if it's true, don't be that jerk and just don't say it. Number two, were they saved? No religious statements, just don't. Why? Because not everyone agrees with your religious views and not only is not always and not only is not always comforting, it can also be insulting. Number three, they're with the angels now. See above's note, then rinse, repeat. Number four, let me know how I can help. This one is tricky. You want to help, but those in mourning won't always ask for help. If you want to help, suggest specific things, for example. I'm free if you need someone to babysit the kids. Actions are better than passive statements. Cook something for them, take them to their favorite restaurant, or buy them tickets to see a movie together. Number five, I know how you feel. Even if you think you do, everyone grieves differently. Don't focus this on yourself. Empathy doesn't involve having to commiserate. Sometimes people will want to hear your experiences, but don't assume they will ask first. For a quicker version of this list, Okay, yeah. Um, I think I'm comfortable. I just want to see what happens. Okay. Okay, we got a Shiyi. I actually wanted to be a... 
cosmetologists for um for funeral home. Uh but it's a lot of work. And I gotta go back to school for that, so and I don't know if there's like a lot of jobs open for that, maybe? Who knows? I just think it's interesting. All done. Mike will take care of Mr. Scott's makeup. It's, see, makeup. I want to. I want to be the person that does that. I just think it would be interesting. I'm not really freaked out about, you know, seeing deceased. If they're like in a peaceful state like this, of course. Oh. I wish you were closer. Wow. I still can't believe this is real. My baby brother. I should have played more games with him when he asked. I. Oh, this one's a dark one. This one's sad. Super sad. I heard it wasn't going to be an open casket. I'm surprised it's public. Usually funerals for these, these circumstances are more private. I still can't believe he did it. I, I feel like I should have known. You know? been able to do something to stop it? There was no way to know. You can't blame yourself. He wouldn't have wanted that. I know, I know. It just it hurts. Yeah, yeah, I know. Let's pay our respects to Mr. Scott. March 3rd, 10.45 a.m. What the subtle little things she does the star at each one. That's a nice touch, a nice little animation. Chad Grant. We are pleased to bring on Rose and Daughters as part of Hillside Heritage Enterprises, Inc. They will be another institution among hundreds of other properties owned across the country. But of course, as part of the adjustment process to the Hillside Heritage Enterprises, Inc. culture, there will be a number of changes that will come to Rose and Daughters. We will send out the memo regarding the specifics and the details of these changes, and we expect them to be followed impeccably. Glad to be the leading Glad to be the leading the way for Rose and Daughters from now on. Yeah, yeah, whatever, Chad. Can't trust anybody named Chad. I'm just kidding. Matthew, can I just say, first off, this is bullcrap. Ugh, knowing how these corporations run, I wouldn't be surprised if they're monitoring our emails right now. No, okay, I really don't believe that. I'm just upset. I get that Amy didn't have much of a choice. You can only fight a huge corporation taking all of your business for so long. This isn't six feet under. And they just swooped in and now we have to deal with, with their BS practices? They're colder than the corpse I picked up from the morgue this morning. Who charges this much for funerals? It feels dirty and exploitive. Let's grab a drink after work. I need to blow off some steam and emails aren't really the most appropriate place to do this. Too late for me, I guess. P.S. If you're reading this, Hillside Overlord, good. <laughs> Hillside Overlord, jeez. We're getting them from Chad now instead of Amy. Her, her job is already sad enough. We don't need all this, Chad. Charlotte, below are the details of our next client. Ensure you follow the requested specifications exactly. After you are done, I will review your work in order to properly evaluate you at the end of the month. Leah Onesco? Onesco? Thank you, Mr. Grant, for agreeing to take care of Jocelyn's cremation. The bike accident was, well, it was more than I was expecting. I know she wanted to be cremated, and to be honest, I don't think I could bear seeing her like that after what happened. Alright, Chad. I'm not doing this for you, I'm doing this for Jocelyn. Let's read this one first. Death Cafe. Mm. Come increase awareness of death with a view to helping people make the most of their infinite lives. Join us, have a tea and cake, and talk with others about our thoughts, fears, 
In Illuminations on Death, the founder of the Death Cafe movement, John Underwood, once said, When people talk about death and dying, it tends to illustrate their humanity. See everyone at the Upside Down Jar next Thursday. The Death Cafe. <laughs> that sounds interesting. I would give that. Can't really write much right now. I have a lot of work I have to do with an inguinal hernia from 1750. It's the oldest in our collection, and you can even see this bit of paper the surgeon put in after removing the hernia. Super cool. I'll send you the link when we have it in catalog. What is my life? What is that sentence I just typed? But anyway, this event that I'm forwarding to you is taking place near you. Figured you'd be into it. Might help with that feeling of restlessness you were talking about before. Could be good to talk about some of the things you're feeling. Lots of death positive people there. Sounds like it'll be a safe space. Well, thank you, Jen. I always love reading your emails. Very positive. Different funeral traditions. Didn't we already talk about this? Funeral rites, even in our own culture, maybe be something many of us be unfamiliar with. For many people, all they know of funeral traditions are what they've seen in media. But I think this goes without saying, funeral rites and traditions aren't the same across on the board. Across the board. Different cultures have different protocols for cleaning the body to different aspects of the service itself. Religion provides different paths for dealing with a death, but the goal is almost always the same, offering support, guidance, and ease to the people who are grieving. And Judaism, intermit usually means immediately after someone has passed. Up until burial, the body is never supposed to be alone. So often, families will appoint a shomer, a guardian, to remain with the body. Preparations for burials begin as soon as possible in Muslim traditions as well. Local Islamic communities, community organizations are also often involved and help the family make arrangements for the funeral service and burial. That is interesting. But not all practices are strictly religiously focused. In the Austin, South Korea, the amount of graveyard space began to shrink drastically, causing a law to be passed that requires families to remove a loved one's body from its burial place after 60 years. Many families begin to cremate more often, but there are also companies that compress remains into beads in turquoise, pink, or black called death beads. This also occurs in North America, Europe, and Japan, but remains such more, much more common in South Korea because of the space issue in graveyards and the expenses of cremation. That is crazy. It's like one of my favorite horror movies is called Repo, the genetic opera. And they've, in that movie, they have like so many deaths that they have run out of space that they just put them in like like they just put them on top of each other not even in the ground but just like like those like places where they have a lot of trash oh my gosh I'm so dumb like a trash dump you know where they just keep piling up more and more trash but it's for the deceased instead Okay, I'm sorry that, if that was weird, but here we go. There you go. Not, and not all practices are somber either. Ever hear of the turning of the bones or Fama Dihana, a ritual by the Malagasy people of Madagascar? Fama Dihana has families return to an estrial crypt, exhume the bodies wrapped in cloth before dancing with the bias to lively music. This practice is a celebration, remembrance, and way of keeping the deceased involved in family news. Death can be difficult, a difficult time for people, obviously, but that doesn't mean there isn't a beauty in the ways we choose to honor and celebrate our deceased. <sighs> okay, there we go. A lot of reading. I, my, my throat is literally getting dry because I've I've been reading. I've been talking so much. Oh, now it says Hillside Heritage. Uh, this is important to me. Okay, let's let's take care of Jocelyn. Okay, gotta take the watch. Then we put this here. 
Okay, that was really fast. Okay. This one has birds on it. Yeah. Ha. Yeah. Should we do a vigil at that spot? Careless drivers, I swear to Bob. Um, I, whenever I see like a cross or a vigil or whatever at the side of the road, you know, where someone probably has had an accident or deceased, uh, I always cross myself to pay respect. I don't know if anybody else does that. I also do that to animals when I see them. She was always so careful, wore her helmet, signaled, used the bike lanes. A-hole drivers, they need to pay attention. Have you heard what's happening to the driver? No, I haven't wanted to ask Leah. This has been hard enough on them without asking about the legal ramifications of all this. Yeah, after all this, let's see what we can do to help them. Shouldn't deal with the death of their partner all by themselves. So it's a car accident. Somebody else? I'm glad I'm here, but wow, I just need a glass of wine and to binge watch something right now. Dude. The office. Or Bob's Burgers. Good binge watching material. I have to go through all her things. How am I supposed to decide what to keep? If you need help, I can help. No, thanks. I mean, but no. I don't know. It's so intimate. Feels like I should do it myself. She would kill me if others saw the things we have. Ha, huh, yeah, she was kind of a closed book. Except to you. Yeah, yeah, she was special. Special. Ugh, I can't talk. So glad it, it was cremation. I would have lost it seeing her body. Let's respect Jocelyn. March 24th, 10.30 a.m. I'm not sure how much longer this game is. Look at her looking at her plants. She's gotta have something alive in here to communicate with. Okay. Let's chat. As stated in a previous email, here are the new rules and code of conduct I expect you to follow from now on while on any premises belonging to Hillside Heritage Enterprises, Inc. First and foremost, there is a required uniform and strict dress codes from now on. Second, most importantly to this, that no, ta no tattoos are to be visible. If you have visible tattoos, ensure they are properly covered and hidden. Who's going to judge me on my tattoos? The deceased? I think she covers up when it's a funeral. When speaking with customers and clients, consider the opportunity to upsell. Always encourage the deceased loved ones to purchase the higher quality package. We find that encouraging loved ones to think of the comfort and style of the deceased has experienced no price limit on it. No, you are using their sadness as a way to get more money from them. What a jerk. Additionally, food is no longer allowed to be brought in. Instead, encourage the deceased loved ones to purchase our premium sandwich and appetizer food package. Our partner catering concepts provides high quality food that will be delivered weekly from their factory and can from their factory. Nobody wants to eat factory food at a funeral. It's always home cooked that helps. It comforts people because it's made with love. Can easily be defrosted the morning. The morning. Oh my gosh. It's nasty food. It's, it's mm, hospital food. I expect all the above changes to be instituted, effective immediately to ensure. Yeah, we have whatever. Okay, Chad. Matthew, Charlie, I need a drink. Beer after work. I also want mozzarella sticks. I can be both hungry and angry. And no, I will not say hangry ever. You just said it, Matthew. 
I have reviewed your request on behalf of a potential family inquiry if we at Hillside Heritage Enterprises Inc. can and will perform green burials. I should have informed you of this in the beginning, but we do not perform green funerals as they are not cost effective. All employees and substitute subsidiaries of, of Hillside, I'm sorry, I'm terrible at bleh, reading, must comply. We do not wish to lose potential customers, though, so do try your hardest to convince the families requesting green burials to instead choose a traditional burial package. <sighs> I am proud to announce that Hillside will receive a contract with the city to dispose of any unclaimed bodies. This is an important revenue stream for us, as I'm sure I don't need to explain to you, Ch Charlotte. Although Hillside is being paid a decent wage from the city for these services, cremation is preferred here as it is the most cost effect efficient of the two options. The first unclaimed body we will be handling belongs to a middle-aged man, possibly homeless, whose body has yet to be claimed. No special preparations are needed for this cadaver, 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 aside from cremation. Oh, that's so sad. I'll name him Timothy, and I claim him. He's my grandfather. Jen, I just saw a video of a gorilla walking on its hind legs. Like a human being, Charlie. A human being. As we as a species have seen the beginning of our end. A gorilla of all animals, Jen. They walk on their hind legs all the time. I, I think. I mean, if it was like a dog or something, I would understand. These are always long. Home funerals, why do it? The appeal of a home funeral is apparent for many, especially if the deceased was somebody very close to you. The idea of keeping them at home until they are ready to be buried or cremated can be comforting. It wasn't that long ago that we were taking care of our own deceased, but nowadays people are quick to pass off their loved ones to a funeral home. Most families aren't given the option and assume this is mandatory. Funeral homes will almost always prepare the deceased using embalming and other methods to make them appear more alive, but isn't this process counterintuitive to the grieving process? Being around the deceased allows the bereaved to spend a longer period of time with their loved one's body, which can help them mourn or give opportunities to family members and friends to see the deceased one last time before they are taken to be buried or cremated. The idea of keeping the deceased body at home might sound gross, but it's important to understand that decomposition takes a long time and you can and can and you can further slow this process by keeping your home cool and dry. To be around your loved ones and to see them decay naturally is an important part of the grieving process. Do people really do this? That sounds very interesting. <clears throat> but strange. Home funerals aren't just more intimate, but they are economical. A traditional funeral complete with body preparation, service, flowers, cards, and many other hidden costs uh, are about $7,000 to $10,000. When you're able to take care of your loved one yourself to wash and dress them and to organize their viewing from home, the only cost remaining is entirely in the cremation or burial itself. However, it's important to understand that different rules apply given on the state you live in. In all states, it is legal to have your loved one's body at home after they die. States like Alabama, Connecticut, Illinois, Indiana, Louisiana, Michigan, Nebraska, New Jersey, and New York require a funeral director's uh, involvement, from signing the death certific certificate to overseeing burial or cremation. If this is a route you decide to go for yourself or your loved ones, make sure you follow everything by the book. But just know that this may be an option available to you and your loved ones if so choose. <clears throat> That's really interesting. I wonder if people really do that, like do their own funerals at home and like bury them themselves. I will. I feel like I'm, I want to go and look that up now. Let me just put this back. Oh gosh, what did I name him? Timothy? I love you, Timothy. I will remember you. You will not be forgotten. 
okay? Hmm. At home funeral. What do you guys think about that? That sounds that sounds very strange, but I can understand why people would do that. Like funerals are expensive. So freaking expensive. And why? I don't even know it's somebody's job. And somebody's gotta do it for you. But I mean, I can do it myself. I feel like I would. so sad. I didn't think about this. I I am here. I am here. I will take I will. We will say some things about Timothy. T oh gosh. Stand over there. Timothy was a cute old man who was very loving and caring and he will be very missed and I loved him even though nobody else probably even knew that he existed. He existed in my heart even before I knew that he existed. And I will remember him always. Goodbye, Timothy. April 9th, 10, 19am. Uh, yeah. We are thrilled to announce that Hillside Subsidiary Rose and Dollars just signed a contract with Morning Valley Hospital, allowing us access to all the cadavers that come through their ped pediatric pediatric and maternity wards. We're excited for the opportunity to work with Morning Hospital, which takes over a hundred thousand patients and receives a butt ton of money and funding and donations annually. There will no doubt be a boon for Hillside's bright and sustained future. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Regarding the last time we spoke, my daughters and I would prefer to host a home funeral ourselves and keep my wife here until she's ready to be buried. I just want to make sure she's taken care of. Her heart attack was so sudden. Uh, I, we don't know what to do. We just want to make sure she has a proper send off. Chad. I understand your desire to keep your wife at home, but I assure you the best way to honor your wife is through a traditional funeral package. A beautiful intimate gathering where all her loved beloved friends and family come together say goodbye everyone the involvement will allow everyone to review your wife ensuring that everyone can see her one last time we can take care of food with our prepared food service package oh yeah whatever chad nobody likes you okay we'll take <gasps> no kobe don't this is don't trust Chad. His his icon face says it all. He's like, Ugh, please, really? I don't want to have to pay for all this. See, you were not able to convince. I see you. You were not able to convince the the Dimka family to take a standard funeral. I had to contact them myself in order to not lose this. <sighs> F you, Chad. Nobody cares about you. Nobody cares about you, Chad. Charlie, it's official. I've put in my two weeks notice. <gasps> you know how unhappy I am working for Mega Corporation 101. My skills, especially my driving ones, are useful in other professions. I'm not worried about myself, but you, you I'm worried about. You're too good for this corporate, corporate scum. You actually care about the people you work with and for. Don't let them defeat you, okay? P.S. I'll bring beers over next week. We can talk a bit more freely. Uh, Jen. Dating a special effects makeup artist, and she's like the coolest person I've ever met in my life. She totally loves Ava's possession and was equally freaked out by the possession scenes, but so utterly delighted at the idea of a support group for people who have been possessed. What? A support group for people who have been possessed? That was. That was your best recommendation in a while. Charlie, you were slipping there. I was getting worried I lost your taste. But yeah, her name is Lily and she's super death positive and isn't freaked out by my work and also isn't too into it like that last dude I saw, Jason, Michael, gah, I can't remember. He was really into it. I just really like spending time around her. I can, I can talk about whatever I want and it's never a conversation stopper. 
She also totally gets what I mean when I say that, like, working with death and spending so much time thinking about death actually makes me happier. It makes everything else feel so much more worth it, you know? Memento, Mori, or whatever they taught us in that one poetry class we took, we just clicked. Feels good. Fun and affirming. Like dating should be. I'm thinking of taking her to Maple Meadows. She's super into roller coasters, and I think the idea of sharing cotton candy, or maybe not, I don't want to throw up on the rides, is sickeningly cute. Then maybe I'll kiss her on top of the ferris wheel. Be super corny and cliche for once in my life. Anywho, enough about me. I'm still kind of in shock about from your last email. Do you think you're going to do it? You know you have my support 100%, no matter what. Are we going to quit? Water, water everywhere, and not a drop to drink. Water cremation. We can call it a few different things, like flameless crema cremation. A bit of an oxymoron, but we'll let it slide. Or perhaps more commonly, resumation. Its technical name, though, is actually alkaline hydro hydrolysis. Whatever we want to call it. It's here, and it's environmentally friendly alternative to traditional cremation. But for the sake of this newsletter, let's call it water cremation. We all know that traditional cremation and burials take a huge toll on the environment. The high energy consumption that adds to the greenhouse gas effect being one of the chief amongst them. And water cremation is an alternative method available for eco-conscious amongst us. Among us. How does it work? It's basically a water-based chemical process that usually that usually really strong alkaline water heated up very high 35 Fahrenheit is basically it basically works like a sped up version of natural decomposition the excess water gets put through the same water treatment process as any sewage water at a factory and alkaline hydrolysis uses significantly less energy than traditional cremation processes neat huh it's been around for a bit and in some places became legal around the end of the first decade of the aughts not a bad alternative for those who don't want their death to have any greater impact on the environment than necessary i'm learning about all these different ways to to have a funeral it's it to be eco-friendly national revenue agency Enter keyword, oh, funeral services. We're going to, gonna start our own business? That's, that's awesome. Yes, get it girl, get rid of Chad. We don't need him. Cleaning the body, all right. Ooh, that was loud. You know what's loud when I pick up the scalpel and put it down? I don't know why it's so freaking loud. I'm starving. Why do these things always make me so hungry? You're always hungry. Wait, why do these things always make you so hungry? It's so cold in here. I think they have the air conditioning on too high. Yeah, let's go for a walk later. It's really nice out. Would be good to stretch my legs. It's because Chad is messing things up. This feels so impersonal. She would have hated this. Yeah, but I don't know. They must have their, have had their reasons. Hmm. Oh, hey, what do you think about that trailer I sent you? Oh yeah, I heard that show was so good. I saw that video of that one kid actor doing karaoke. It's so random. Do you think we did the right thing? I feel bad not knowing what mom asked we're well, not doing what mom asked for. I know, honey, but what that Chad guy said seems right. We don't want to dishonor her memory by letting her rot. Sniffles. Yeah, I just want mom to know I loved her. Wish I hadn't yelled at her before. Shh, it's okay. She knew you loved her. Fights happen. Please don't be hard on yourself. Yeah, yeah I'm going to miss her. Me too. Let's pay our respects. Sorry, this is long. <laughs> I did not expect it to be this long. August 30th, 9 a.m. Maybe it's because I'm reading it. Oh! It's changed. Okay. Amy! Charlie, dear, I'm so proud of you. I knew there was something special in you when I hired you for Rose and Daughters. If there is anything I can do for you, please do not hesitate to ask. I am always happy to, he to help. I sorely miss 
I sorely miss you and Matthew's terrible sense of humor. It's pretty terrible. <laughs> oh my gosh. Hey, good Charlie. When I first became a hearse driver, I was told that my most important job wasn't steering. It was sympathizing. I respectfully disagree. And thankfully, I concentrate on my driving skills since I am now working as a, wait for it, a bus driver. A school bus driver, Charlie. Can you believe it? Pretty sure if I said the most important part of my job wasn't steering, I'd be fired immediately. I didn't know how else to tell you. For some reason, I was worried you'd think less of me, but I don't know why. You've never been the judgmental type, kind. And besides, corpses are way easier to deal with than children. <laughs> Screaming children, might I add. I actually love it. These kids can be pretty cute. I, but don't tell Amy that I told you that. She was always harping on me for not having any kids and for being all cynical about them. Congrats on your new business, Charlie. I'm proud of you. I'll swing by your new place one day and show you my new wheels. Maybe we can grab a bite to eat. Well, good for you, Matthew. Charlie, I'm so happy for you. I know it's been a rough year for you. Seriously, I think our wine intake saw a bazillion percent increase. But you've stuck through it all like a champ. You deserve this. Finally being your own boss is a great move for you. No more having to explain anything you don't want to. I'm trying not to be too cheesy right now. Can't wait to be home next week for our visit and check out your new space. Have you heard about these green burial pods? When I find the link in my 1 million open tabs, I'll shoot it over to you. That sounds like what I was just talking about. The pods. Today's the day already, isn't it? I can't believe how quickly this has come out. Thank you for your understanding and for your work. You've made today easier already. See you at 1 p.m. Magnolia Forest Funeral Home and Natural Burial Park. <gasps> Magnolia Forest, named after the magnolia trees that surround the funeral home, specializes in at home funerals and green burials in our natural park. Our goal is to empower families, encourage them to have a closer relationship with death and the dying process. The death of a loved one can be a confusing and sometimes traumatic time, and we want you to feel fully involved in your loved one's death care decisions. Whether you're looking to care for your loved one from the comfort of your home, be present during their cremation, or bury them in our natural cemetery, Magnolia Forest is here to work with you and provide these simple but intimate, meaningful options. Our natural burial park allows the body to return to the earth and recycle naturally. It is intended as an environmentally sustainable alternative to existing funeral practices. Our park has room for bodies of all sizes and ages, as well as beloved pets. Families also have the option to bury their loved ones themselves if they so choose. Oh my gosh, okay. That is amazing. <gasps> Infants are buried at no charge. That's really awesome. Good for you. So cute. Let's go see. Oh, look at her little outfit. Her little dress with the little... Oh my gosh. <gasps> this is so cute. Look at this natural burial. Look at these people burying their own. And then these are making trees. It hurts. I thought it'd be easier, but it's not. It hurts so much. But thank you for helping me give her the funeral she always wanted. Anyway, I think we're going to get ready to get started now. Ooh. Oh, I can't talk to anybody. Okay. Ooh. Did you guys like that? I liked it. That was super sweet. <gasps> that was really wholesome. About death, that's very positive. Looking at it in a better light, and I learned a lot of things along the way. Things I did not know about. Hmm. <gasps> pets! You included your pets? Oh, wholesome. Wholesome. 10 out of 10. Would purchase again. was made in Canada because of the different spelling. I was curious about that. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, thank you guys.
always for joining me today on this journey of life and death. I hope you all have a wonderful day and thank you so much for sticking around even though this was a little long you had to hear me talk for so long but I appreciate it thank you so much goodbye